Welcome to the That's Good Sports Podcast. I'm Brandon. I don't. I don't know my name. I can't. You know what's the most embarrassing thing is when you say your you fuck up saying your own name. And I do it. I do it a lot on my show. But I I just retake it and cut it out. I'm gonna leave this in so people understand that uh, I should not be allowed to stream free podcasts on the internet. I'm Brandon Perna here with Will Keys. Will yeah. is on vacation. I am, yeah. Uh, I'm in Santa Cruz, California. Um, Don't know if anybody who's listening has been there. Um, But one thing, I heard that it's actually uh, scientifically proven that everybody's favorite word is their own name. Um, So just that you would even mess up your favorite word, that's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, well, it's not my favorite word. My favorite favorite word is fuck, and I've never messed that up. So That's a hard one, too. (laughs) If I, if my parents would have named me fuck, uh, I would have <laughs> been really just like everybody else. But they went with Brandon, yeah. so it's not my favorite word. Uh, this is a, a podcast about football. Uh, the first half of the podcast is about the Broncos. Second half about the NFL. Uh, today we're talking about Marquette King and D Max feud in Denver. Uh, the Broncos getting ready for their first preseason game. Some news about Demarius Thomas. Uh, what you can kind of look for with the Broncos versus Vikings in this first game. And then with the NFL, we're going to get to uh, a little bit of our thoughts on the first episode of Hard Knocks with the Browns, some of the holdouts, Aaron Donald, Khalil Mack, some big ones right now. Um, and a little bit of the, the male cheerleader news and a new segment we're doing calling Quotable – Quotable quotes, quoting player quotes. Uh, It's about um, player quotes, if you would have Yeah, you didn't get the idea first. So, uh, yeah, so this podcast airs on my second YouTube channel, That's Good Broncos. We're on iTunes, we're on Podbean, so you can download it and listen to it at those places like a real podcast. Uh, And if you're at iTunes, please leave us a, a review. We've got a bunch of five stars, and somebody dropped in and gave us a one-star review, Will. So somebody hated it enough that they went to iTunes and told Uh, us to uh, eat shit. I think I know who that was. Um, I think it was probably the YouTube commenter from a few weeks back um, who who got mad when we called him out. Well, that's going to happen. My guess. Yeah. Sorry, Chief. Play with fire and get burned. Um, So Will's on vacation. Yeah. I have a headache because my body can no longer handle uh, alcohol. If I have more than two alcoholic drinks, ding, I get a headache. Ding, ding. And uh, last night I did an escape room, Will. You ever done an escape room? I can't say I have. Would you like to go into detail here? Uh, well, we made it out in less than an hour. Um, they're pretty fun. Escape room uh, is also, I think, what Browns players call the Browns locker room. Mm. <laughs> come here for the jokes stay for the insight what we say there is much insight uh no escape rooms are uh, pretty good if you're smart which i clearly am so uh, i would Mm -hmm. say it's pretty easy so this is just like a room that you just like you just try to find your way out of yeah basically they give you you go in there and there's like a theme ours was cuban crisis and uh you missile to, crisis or just like cuban no like it was it was about the missile crisis um, okay and you got to solve you got to find clues and solve puzzles to, that give you like keys to unlock shit that go into other rooms that go into other rooms so you can get the final code to get out of the room so it's a <laughs> it's a trendy thing to do how many people just haven't ever figure it out and like starve to death lots it's the number one killer of uh people now <laughs> Taurus and like <laughs> it passed people, people just trying to go on a you know fun date right nope. all nope, of a sudden you're, you're dead, dead. yeah yep. it's it's killing more people than cardiac disease and uh <laughs> car wrecks so yeah Are which those, is okay you know yeah. overpopulation overpopulation uh, yeah well some would say it's a better way to go out um, I see you've got some uh, crustios in the corner there. Are those jagged metal crustios? <laughs> I, I, I would have to look at the box. There might be a reference to it. There's definitely like some worms in there and some other shit. But uh, yeah, that's a classic Simpsons episode. 
Mm, yeah. And I got the Simpsons chess piece or the chess set too. What do you think was like the the Simpsons obsession with the Broncos? Because they get referenced like a ton, especially in the early seasons. Yeah, they get kind of shit on. Um, yeah. Like Just to that. be fair, like they were kind of the laughing stock of the of the NFL and the Simpsons yeah. when, started to get popular. When uh Homer they gave him the Denver Broncos, and yeah. they're like, not the Denver Broncos. And Marcus yeah. like, why would you care about that? Yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, I want to be John Elway. And he like, dies in the end zone. He's like, final score. 55 to 7. 55. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. He jumps over, like, the pile for the, for the touchdown, I believe. Yeah. Well, well, it's because they lost a lot of Super Bowls back then. They sure did. They sure did. I had, yeah, I, I always think about that because, like, I never had to go through those three losses. And I'm not sure if you really remember them either. No, I was kind of – I was, like, a little too young to fully yeah. get the uh, magnitude of mm-hmm. despair most Broncos fans in the 80s uh, kind of Yeah. Felt. My dad, uh, like, right before they started making the Super Bowl, moved to California – and for the third one, uh, for the 49ers Super Bowl, because he was living in Sacramento at the time, uh, all of my, my mom's side of the family came to watch, and they're all 49ers fans. Ooh, yeah. And uh, that was an ugly scene. Like, I think he ended up in the hospital. And <laughs> I would, like, to be fair, I'd probably be, like, eating the couch cushions off the sofa by, like, the third quarter. I'd be done. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be in that environment. Especially after three of those. Yeah, that's bad. So That, that book in the corner is about the Broncos' first Super Bowl run with yeah. uh, Craig Morton. Yeah. I found that at my grandparents' house a couple years ago, and it's uh, pretty cool because that was, like, the first time the team became, like, relevant. So, yeah. Broncos. Yeah, so, it, yeah, if there's any listeners that were, like, um, around at that time and remember even, like, the late 80s Super Bowls, let alone the 77 one, yeah, hit us up. Tell us what that was like and how you survived. Tell Please. us how much you hated yourself at that time. <laughs> yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was a tough time. Okay, so let's get into this yeah, shit. Let's Will. do this. Uh, first thing, tell what's the what? Let's get it. What happened with Marquette King and DMac? Yeah, so a little bit of a um, standoff at Broncos camp. So I think the story starts where Marquette King was walking around after practice, and I think he did an interview with uh, one hundred four three the fan with Brandon Stokely and who else? Do you know Zach who else Bi- was that Zach Bai. Okay, yeah. And he was giving, like, one-word answers and didn't really seem like he wanted to be there, um, which he's kind of known to do from time to time. I've heard, like, he doesn't really like to talk about football, which is, you know, kind of an important responsibility for for most football players. Right. Um, And so, yeah, that happens. Not really a big deal. I think Brandon Stokely and and the other guy handled it probably pretty well. Um, probably happens from time to time and then uh, DMAC got in and was saying some stuff about Marquette King for like close to an hour I heard and yeah I think so he Marquette ripped King, him he ripped him yeah. pretty good on his his show right right yeah and so uh, Marquette King obviously got word about that and then confronted him the next day at training camp it was like well they got into it on Twitter too oh did they was that yeah. first uh oh yeah I, you did the yeah, he did the think, grapefruit and uh, open mouth emoji, which um, for the uninitiated, it means suck my dick. Grapefruit? And, I think you mean eggplant, right? Egg, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Will uh, has no uh, <laughs> knowledge of vegetables and fruits. If you're, if a you're, meat if you're, diet. If your dick looks like a grapefruit, go to a doctor, please. <laughs> yes. First thing you need to do is see a doctor. Yeah, yeah, stop taking Viagra and go to a doctor. For the love of God. Um, yeah. yeah, so he basically told him to suck his dick. Um, <laughs> Emmanuel Sanders chimed in and was like, don't let him bother you. Like, he just loves to start stuff. Uh, and then the next day, Market King confronted him and was like, keep your name, uh, keep my name off your lips. And DMAX said, or what? Uh, me- <laughs> the picture was the funniest thing because DMAX, like, I can't imagine he's more than like five, six. And then Market King is, you know, Market King. And they're just like, two heavyweights staring down uh and then eventually pr got in there um someone from the pr staff of the broncos got in and separated marquette king um and then the story was that the broncos pulled d credentials um, but i don't think that was true 
Right. And, but I don't, I don't know if he's been back since. So. No, I don't think he has. I did, uh, I did a little, I, I did a little research on that. I got some a little investigative journalism news. Uh, yeah, I don't think they pulled his credentials, but from what I've heard, it sounds like the fan and the Broncos PR came to an agreement where basically D Mac wouldn't be there for a while. So you mm, might, you might come back later. Uh, but him and big Al Alfred Williams are there every day, I guess. And neither one of them were there, uh, the following day. Uh, I don't know if Al's been back, but I think he's showing some solidarity, um, with D Mac. Uh, so that's kind of what I think it is. And I think they just want to let it blow over and then maybe he'll be back. But afterwards, like you could tell D Mac's pissed. He was shitting on like. <laughs> the Broncos stadium the other day on the radio and just talking about how much better Coors Field is and how ugly the Broncos stadium is and all, all this other stuff. So I think he's a little bitter. Um, I kind of get both sides. I get where Marquette King's coming from. I get where D-Mac's coming from. I think uh, Broncos PR probably overreacted, uh, especially because Marquette King was the one who came up and approached D-Mac at practice. Like, that's weird. You yeah. don't really do that if you're a player. Um, and I know the reasons the Broncos PR have given about me not being allowed at training camp are just lies. They are falsehoods. So uh, I'm not going to try to – Can you go into specifics there? Uh, they, they basically say it's because my content goes on YouTube and that doesn't work with the NFL uh, and that there's this rule you can't leave content up for longer than – video content up for more than 24 hours if you sh get footage from training camp. Uh, but there's plenty of, example of examples of that existing outside of me doing it. So it's just like a lame excuse for them uh, to not let me in. They say, I am welcome there. I just can't do my videos. So it's like, why the fuck would I go if I'm not <laughs> making content your, about the, you know, the Monday team? Monday morning column. Right. Your weekly, your weekly Peter King column, of course. Yeah, so I'm not going to defend the PR staff because I think they fucked up too. Uh, I think DMAC <laughs> fucked up. I think Marquette King fucked up. And I just wish they would all get along, God damn it! Although yeah, this, no. this is far more interesting. Oh, yeah, this is the most interesting thing to happen in training camp this year, I think. Yeah. Um, I think I'm, if you're Marquette King, you just got to get used to talking about football. And if you want to yeah. talk about something else – Tell them that, hey, I've got this thing that I'd like to talk about, and they'll do it. Like, they will gladly talk about the things you want to talk about. Uh, you just – you got to be, like, I don't know, a little more open and willing to do it. And if you don't, you take the Marshawn Lynch approach, and everybody knows, like, you're not going to do it. And I think that's kind of what he wants. But he also seems like the kind of guy who wants attention as well. So a it's like a, a weird sort of thing, I believe. Yeah, he wouldn't be, like, dancing after punts if he wasn't looking for a little bit of attention because, you know, punters, usually not um, people who are looking for the spotlight. But, you know, what do I know? I think the thing is, like, I think DMAC rubs people the wrong way a little bit because he's originally from New England. And right. I think people still assume that, like, he has a soft spot for Boston sports and probably likes the Patriots a little bit. And you get the feeling that, like, if it was a homegrown guy who was, like, stirring things up with players, it'd be a little more acceptable. But, like, a guy I'll do from that. – I'll do that yeah. job. Yeah. Like, a guy from Boston, yeah. you feel like he's a little bit of, like, a, you know, turncoat, rogue agent type of guy. Yeah, who knows? I think d good at what he does. I don't agree I with too. everything he does. You know what I mean? But you could say that about anybody you watch. Mm-hmm or listen to who has to talk every day for three hours. So that's a lot, a lot of space right. to fill. Well, you and I can barely do an hour once a week. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. He, no, he's impressive. We're like, what the what fuck should wrong. we talk about this week? Huh? And anything yeah. interesting happen? Not really. So yeah. Multiply that like times three, five days a week. Right. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about this DT injury because I think let's it's interesting. It. Uh, that was it. NFL.com posted an article. Yeah. About yeah. James Palmer. Right. Uh -huh. Palmer 
who gets a lot of Broncos access. Uh, DT has been playing with a partially torn labrum in, in his hip for two years. Said the hip's been an issue longer than that. Uh, and that uh, basically this offseason with a, a diet change through scientific help with like a, a training performance center, they diagnosed like things that he's been eating in vitamin deficiencies causing inflammation in his body. And so the inflammation obviously is going to aggravate an injury like that. Uh, and that, you know, he feels better revitalized and, and ready to go. He contemplated retirement because of the injury, because he hasn't been able to be himself on the field and the injury is extremely painful. Uh, you know, if you're trying to cut or use your hips to run on a football field. So I guess, I think it's great he figured out like a way to combat the pain and stuff that's happening with it. But if, and I guess I don't know enough about it medically, but if he's known that the labrum has been partially torn for two years, why wouldn't you just go and get like the surgery in an off season to yeah. fix it would be my question. And maybe it's because there's not a lot of success with that. Maybe it's one of those things that's better to try to play through, but if it's causing you that much pain for that long, I'd have to question the medical advice he's been getting. Yeah, has he been, has he been like talking to the San Antonio Spurs medical staff? <laughs> I don't know. Same people that pissed off Kawhi Leonard. I don't know. Like To be honest, before I read this article, uh, I didn't really know what a labrum was or where it was located. Um, but I yeah, thought it was in an arm. I, I you could have told me like it was in your head and I would have been like, Oh yeah, I guess so. Um, it's like, I haven't taken biology since, you know, 2011. So what do I know? Um, but yeah, like hips are very important for a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, you need them not only, uh, you know, to hold up your pants, um, but also <laughs> to make cuts on the field. Uh, to do double moves and stuff like that. So it makes sense why he hasn't been getting as much separation. Um, but did you read the Drew McGarry article, like why your team sucks for the Broncos last week? Oh, the Deadspin one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I read some of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really long, so no. It was. Yeah, there's this part where he said, like, uh, Demarius Thomas looks like – He's been playing with sandbags taped to his ankles for the last two years. And I was like, that was the only part of the article that like really stung for me because I knew it was true. <laughs> and now this is coming out like, like you almost feel better that it's not just like, uh, like a really like natural decline, but like there's been something that's been bugging him that can be fixed. Hopefully right. that can get him back to, I don't know, maybe at least like 80% of his old self, which is a really good receiver. So Yeah, and he like he wasn't great, but he was also still putting up numbers. And I think yeah. with Case Keenum, and we've talked about this before even knowing this injury, like I thought he had a good chance to be a like solid fantasy wide receiver this year because uh of the improvement at the quarterback position. And if he's feeling better and if they actually found a solution for whatever the extent of that injury is then yeah like I think we'll know where he is at in terms of naturally being a 31 year old wide receiver in the league versus you know him trying to play through an injury that was extremely painful uh, we saw what happened to Peyton Manning when that happened uh, I think DT we've seen that as well and you never like that's the thing that's really hard to gauge with players you never know what all of the injuries they are uh, dealing with at any given time. So we like to criticize them and make fun of them when they start to look like, you know, they're not as good as they used to be. But there's so many factors that go into that. So as a Broncos fan, I hope he is actually healthy and we see him put up like 12, 1,300 yards again this season. Nine or ten touchdowns uh, would be awesome. And the other thing I thought was interesting was he talked about fans are already writing him off and putting Sutton and uh, Hamilton ahead of him. And he's like, they haven't even caught a ball in a game yet. And <laughs> fans are already saying like, I'm done. I'm out of here. So I think he's got a lot to prove too. And I think that'll only help. Yeah. I mean, you could argue that like Demarius Thomas is at his prime. So like 
I don't know, probably 2013, 2014, maybe like the highest or like the best prime of any wide receiver in franchise history. You'd say Rod yeah. Smith probably was better for longer, although we don't know how Demarius Thomas's career is going to go for the next few years. No, he said um, he wants to play for 15 or 16 years now. Now that's how good he's feeling. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm on board. Dead. If you've seen his abs lately, he ain't lying. Mm-mm. Been staring at those. Trust me. So let's. Uh, the Broncos are playing yeah. the Vikings on Sunday. There are some things to watch here. Uh, the thing I was probably most excited to watch, which I'm going to talk about in my uh, Broncos Vikings video, probably up tomorrow morning, maybe tonight, is. I wanted to see Tremaine Brock play. I wanted to see Sua Cravens play. Neither one of them practiced today. I doubt they're going to play. I don't know exactly what injuries. I think Brock's got a hamstring ish- issue, which you definitely want to rest. So it's smart not to play him. I don't know what Sua Cravens injury is. Do you? you know I don't know. Practicing? No. Um, He's always injured though. So. Right. And then Minelik Watson didn't suit up today. And by suit up, I mean uh, wear a helmet to – because they were just wearing helmets. Um, so he's injured, and Billy Turner, I guess, will be the number two right guard. Uh, so the the cornerback position, that slot corner, I wanted to see Tremaine Brock. Looks like Isaac Yadam is going to get the, the the reps there. And then we know Brendan Langley, Marcus uh, Rios. Uh, that's a position to watch. Uh, Craven's going to be that nickel linebacker type guy. We're not going to see that. Uh, so Jamal Carter again. Yeah, who's oh. great in the preseason last year. Somebody just drove by real fast, didn't they? Oh, yeah, on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so injuries kind of putting a small damper on this first game. Uh, but what, what are, what are you going to watch, Will? What are you looking for, Broncos, Vikings? Um, I think kind of the obvious ones are the two wide receivers, uh, Deshaun Hamilton and Cortland Sutton. Like, you want to see if it translates to a game for Sutton. Right. As opposed to, you know, Practice. just going up against the same cornerbacks every day. And just it might just be that, like, he's way taller than <laughs> uh, Chris Harris and Bradley Roby. Um, I don't think he's going to get any snaps against – I don't know, like someone like Xavier Rhodes, although that would be really interesting and a huge challenge for a guy in his first game. But the Vikings are pretty deep still at corner. So I think it'll definitely be a challenge for him. But other than that, um, I want to see the tight ends too. I want to see Jake Butt, obviously because we've been waiting to see him in game action for a year and change now. We thought we were going to see him at the end of last season. Uh, They're giving us some – some butt blue balls on the injury report before they finally deactivated them. Butt blue balls. My yeah. Butt balls. Uh, yeah, and Hireman's kind of been dealing with some sort of injury too. So yeah, I think he's hurt too. He might not play much, if at all. So we might get a long, long look at Jake. But uh, Fumagalli is going to play, and I think uh, Austin Trailer too. Yeah, we'll, we'll see more of. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I think the Broncos depth chart could end up being but Trailer and Fumagalli. Mm-hmm. If they want to move past Hireman. They keep giving him chances, just like they're going to keep giving Isaiah McKenzie and punt returner. So punt return is another thing I'm going to be watching. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie had an injury yesterday. I think he was back today. Wow. Philip Lindsay is going to be kick returning. He's Lindsay's dropped, I guess, a handful of punts in practice. Awesome. So, Isaiah McKenzie, uh, who's the other guy they've got back there? God damn it. Uh, Langley? Is it Langley? No. Or is he just the kickoff guy? Kickoff guy. Oh, shit. I just wrote about it, and the name's slipping me. Hold on. Garrett oh. Bowles? Garrett Bowles. Uh... Don't talk back. River Craycraft. Oh, yeah. Cray Cray. Uh, <laughs> you're going to see him back there, and he might be the guy that ends up getting the job. So he whoever might, yeah. doesn't drop the punts is what we want to we wanna see. Yeah, I think they're also getting the sense that Craycraft probably gives them a little bit more on offense than McKenzie at this point, right. which, it like, all signs are pointing to them keeping either Tim Patrick 
or Craycraft, who's been kind of like hovering around the organization for a couple of years now. Uh, but the, like this looks like his best chance. Um, I have no idea what's going on with Jordan Taylor, but usually the Broncos like to keep um, – He's injured. One, yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if they're going to put him on an IR. Um, but yeah. it, it's kind of pointing that way. Hip they surgery. Usually, Unlike yeah. DT, Jordan Taylor got that fucking hip surgery. <laughs> Probably wise. Yeah, the Broncos are, are known to keep one token white wide receiver um, as opposed to six for the New England Patriots. They do the opposite of the Patriots. Yeah. So like they, um, I don't think they want to stash him on the practice squad for that reason, just because the Patriots will offer Craycraft like $8 million a year to be their seventh wide receiver. Craycraft uh, or Taylor? Craycraft. Possibly Taylor, too. Oh, is Craycraft white? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, that. yeah. Yeah, his, his first name's River. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I guess that's true. Hey, you know. Typical. His name, it sounds like he's like the heir to a, uh, uh, his, like the family business is they make like ski boats. Like oh, yeah. River Craycraft. Get a, <laughs> get a River Craycraft this summer for all of your water sporting needs. Yeah, no, all you need to know is that like he went to Washington State, so white. Name's River to white. Um and also, like, people talk about him, like, uh, being, like, a scrappy gym rat who's, like, first one in, last one out. Uh, so, that's, like, the the holy trifecta of the white wide receiver. Now, it makes sense now because I know Brandon Stokely has been very high on River Craycraft. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I see a little bit of um, <laughs> myself in Craycraft. Can't quite put my finger on it, but it's something. Uh, cool. And then, of course, yeah. the other thing is that uh, basically – this game is the battle between all of the Broncos quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. Kirk Cousins, rumored almost. this offseason, almost a Bronco. Does not show you've, you've got Cousins versus Keenum, and then it's Simeon versus Lynch, and then it's Kyle Sloter versus Chad Kelly. So, really, five of the six guys have all been or currently are Denver Broncos quarterbacks. Interesting storyline. Uh, I hope. Keenum plays better, Simeon plays better, and Kelly plays better. Yeah. Um, so, like, I was thinking who's probably going to play the best. And I think Case Keenum and Kirk Cousins aren't going to play long enough to really No, they'll play a series or two at most. Yeah, right? I think they'll probably hand off, maybe throw, like, a couple slants or out routes, and then that'll be it. Um, but I think looking at it, like, I think Trevor Simeon's probably going to be the best out of the back of the right? I really hope Sivian looks good. It'll just make yeah. Twitter and like my post game recap more. It'll though, yeah. Twitter will light on fire if Trevor Simeon throws like three touchdowns. Yeah, I want that to happen. And I think I think Case Keenum's like first completion is going to be like the most overhyped completion that we see on social media. Yeah. Oh yeah, Corlin Sutton's going to catch like a six yard bubble screen, and people are going to be like drawing up his Hall of Fame bust. They'll be like, that's the future, baby. Yeah. The future is now. Somebody's going to say something. St- I'm going to say that. The future is probably like one year from now when he's actually starting. <laughs> yeah. Follow Will and I on Twitter because once Sutton makes his first catch, we'll both tweet out. Oh, yeah. The future is now at Cortland Sutton at the exact <laughs> same time. Yeah. He's going to look at that. Actually, you know what? Everybody, just I want everybody tweet that at him when he makes his first catch. Right. And then, but the also. Now. Also follow, too. yeah. Also follow it with the. Uh, but we still love you at Demarius Thomas. Yes, we wouldn't want to. Yeah, you know, we wouldn't want to hurt his feelings because he brought that up to James Palmer. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'd be like if there was like someone trying to take my job. Um, I'd feel kind of bad about it too if people were tweeting about yeah. the future being now. People try to take uh, my job every day on YouTube by making videos. Yeah. So mm, you got to be the best to be the best. Right. True. Do you have uh, Do you have any bold predictions for Saturday? No. <laughs> do you have no, any lukewarm no. predictions? No. I guess we gave. I guess we just said Trevor Simeon's going to be the best. Yeah, player. that's our bold prediction. Yeah. Let's, let's transition to NFL talk. This <laughs> our transition, uh, and we're going to do NFL with a new segment called. Quotable quotes, quoting player quotes, because this week, 
we had some interesting player quotes that I wanted to read here on the podcast. Uh, so I'm going to read them. Will Keys, if you think of something you need to add, just jump in. If not, these really just speak for themselves. So it started with Richie in- Incognito, who – after he said, uh, basically, the Vikings reached out to him kind of to get some feelers to see if he would be interested in playing offensive line for Minnesota, uh, their head coach, Mike Zimmer, said that was not true. So Richie Incognito got on Twitter and said, Mike Zimmer is a fucking liar. Um, and then the next day, Incognito apologized. And his apology was, I would like to apologize to coach Mike Zimmer. My bad, dude. Tony was a father figure to me, still dealing with his loss. Uh, He's referring to Tony uh, Sperano, who passed away. And I guess Richie had been sort of talking to him. He posted, like, some tweets about it. It did not prove that the Vikings were actually interested in him. But I thought his apology was more interesting than him calling Mike Zimmer a fucking liar because he followed it up with – Calling Mike Zimmer dude, basically. My bad, dude. <laughs> so, uh, That's I don't want bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought it was a really funny apology. Uh, I don't know if Mike Zimmer it, took it to heart, uh, but I think it's safe to say we will not see Richie Incognito in Minnesota. Yeah, no, um, I don't think we're going to see Richie Incognito in the NFL again until Rex Ryan gets another head coaching job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then you better believe he's going to be the starting left guard for somebody. Uh, I bet, I bet John Gruden would take him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's like, it's like I want, I want a nasty guard, man. Yeah. <laughs> I want someone who's gonna, I want someone who's gonna find his way into the substance abuse program and then call me a fucking liar right to my face. That's right. So, and then uh, I read this Bleacher Report article by Master yeah. Test. Fastian, Tesfatsian. One of the most absurd names of all time. Tesfatsian. Yeah, this is the guy who wrote it. Yeah, that's the the writer, and it was His with first Alvin, name is Master. Yeah, right. It was with Alvin Kamara, and I'm just gonna read some of Alvin Kamara's quotes from the article. Uh, I don't want to be a celebrity. That's not my goal. I'm not interested in being the shit or lit. Very Sounds cool. like. Yeah, it sounds like the beginning to the worst Dr. Seuss poem of all time. <laughs> I'm not I'm not interested in being the shit or lit or looking at a girl slit. All I want to do is, is get hit. Get hit. <laughs> Said the running back for the Saints. <laughs> um and then he went on to say I and this was okay, yeah, this this might be my favorite one. I don't eat mushy foods. I just vividly remember not fucking with foods. Like, nope, I'm not eating that. Some of the shit I've never even tasted. Like, that shit nasty. And that quote was spawned by some peach cobbler that was served to him during the interview that he did not eat. Mm -hmm, Because it was too mushy. It was too mushy. It was, like, too Uh, gooey. So it was like, um, here's the thing, Alvin. Uh, I don't know (laughs) uh, if they make peach cobbler any other way. To be honest yeah. with you, you just get in like a solid block or something. I don't know. It's like, delicious. You should, you should, yeah. you're not, you're missing yeah. out by not it's eating. Like, yeah. Cobbler. Throw that back in the oven for 45 minutes. <laughs> I want it. I want it rock hard. I want it nice and flaky. Right. Uh, okay. Then he went on and this, this was the quote that kind of got passed around uh, because mm-hmm. they were talking about the, the playoffs and Kamara said in reference to uh the Vikings and Eagles uh, in the playoffs, we'd beat the shit out of the Eagles because we was rolling. If we won versus Minnesota, I knew nobody was going to stop us because we came all the way back. We know what the standard is. So yeah, fuck Minnesota. (laughs) So uh, I love the confidence there. I don't think they would have beat the shit out of the Eagles uh, because they didn't, they couldn't even beat the Vikings. They did come all the way back, but they got put way the fuck down. And then, yes, Minnesota got a miracle play to beat them. Just funny. And I like that he throws in, fuck Minnesota. So basically, (laughs) in one week, Mike Zimmer, head coach of the Vikings, called a fucking liar by Richie Incognito. And then 
uh, Alvin Kamara says, fuck all of Minnesota. Um, so really, this has just kind of been a week to dump on the Vikings, I guess. And the Broncos yeah. will play the Vikings. So it's we've come full circle. Yeah, we, they might be the third team to do it. Um, but this was by far one of the most bizarre profiles that I've ever read because, like, halfway through, I was reading this. I'm like, Alvin Kamara kind of seems like a little bit of an asshole. And then the author writes, like, some NFL players have described uh, Alvin Kamara as standoffish or an asshole. And I was like, yeah. And I was, like, waiting for, like, him to, like, kind of turn things around, like, turn him on his head and be like – But he's not. Well, he's yeah. Trying- <laughs> he actually spends, like – uh 25 hours a week at the local children's hospital right but it's like nope he just talks about how he won't eat a he like he hates bananas even though he's never tried one um which is like that's the most like like i've only heard that from eight-year-olds like that's a classic eight-year-old thing to say right like, well to, if i hate bananas honest, have you tried one no <laughs> my, my wife doesn't like bananas um, but has she tried one i not recently I mean, yeah, I, I just want it once. I just want you to try it once. Exactly. And they're very healthy for you. Yeah. I I remember I didn't like bananas before Maybe. I turned like seven. <laughs> and I was like, this sucks. And then like I, you know. Yeah, you got to. seven. You, your palate changes as you get older. Everybody mm-hmm. knows that. So like <laughs> I didn't like beer the first time I tried it. Now I love it. But my stomach doesn't like it, so I just drink whiskey straight, which is fine with my stomach, and I can drink a lot less of it. It's just it changes. It changes. You and sure now, do. If I have more than two of them, I wake up with a fucking headache. So uh, let me read. Let me read his final quote because I know I already said the other one was my favorite, but this one's just as good. Uh, <laughs> he was talking about I think his first college that he played football at. And uh, he said, I think that was a stepping stone. I was, wait, sorry, let me start over. I think that was a stepping stone. I was in the fucking Pokeball in Bama. And I fucking evolved into some other shit. Motherfucking, what's that dragon shit? That orange motherfucker? Charizard? (laughs) Did Did I do that quote justice? I think so. I think this quote becomes really, really funny if you imagine Samuel L. Jackson's character from Pulp Fiction saying it. <laughs> it's like it's like that orange motherfucker Charizard. Right. No, that's a good way to imagine it in your head. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he doesn't like mushy food. He's got Pokemon references, <laughs> and he told Minnesota to fuck off. Uh, I know you, you, you said after reading it, you kind of got uh, put off by Kamara. I got the exact opposite. I think <laughs> really? he might be my favorite player in the NFL now, and I hope he dishes out quotes like this more often. And uh, I think it's going to do the exact opposite of what he says. He cares about making him popular or being lit shit because uh, this is going to make him the littest, shittest motherfucker in the NFL if he keeps saying stuff like this. Yeah, I think the one thing that really did it for me was uh, in the middle of the interview, like he just opened up Twitter and started looking at his own highlights. <laughs> Which he's like, yeah, I don't care about being famous. Here, if, by the way, do you remember this 21-yard reception I had against the Rams? If if I ever get interviewed for like something important because of uh, uh, my my show, I'm gonna uh-huh. I'm gonna do the exact same thing now. I'm gonna open oh, yeah. up one of my YouTube videos and be like, "You remember when I said this thing? That was pretty good." Although I don't want to hype myself, okay? That's not what this <laughs> is about. Oh yeah, no, I want I want to be like interviewed by someone from like Vanity Fair, <laughs> and then show up and just do the most bizarre shit. So it ends up in a profile that people are reading like 25 years from now. It's like. Yes, he was uh, wearing a bathrobe at three in the afternoon. Uh, it just stepped out of the hot tub, and <laughs> and he had nothing underneath yeah. that bathrobe, which he yeah. was not uh, didn't seem to care about if he was fully covered at all times. He was uh, he was <laughs> yeah he was eating cooked panda, um, which I'll have you know is an <laughs> endangered species. Okay, that's not cool, Will. That is uh, eating an adorable animal is. You cross the line. Well, here's the thing. I'm probably never going to get interviewed by Fanity Fair, so. Yeah, but you might actually eat a panda. 
<laughs> I, I, look. You unlike, start with a denial about Vanity Fair and don't even address the fact that you want to eat a panda. Unlike Alvin Kamara, I'll try everything once. What? What would you? <laughs> what would you say is uh, the the most adorable animal? that also might taste the best. Wow. Well, people eat dogs, um, but I would never do that. Yeah, but all dogs aren't adorable. It's true. Um, but I think, wow, uh, probably a pig. <laughs> probably a pig. And I have no qualms with eating a pig. Right. But you- everybody, like, everybody loved the movie Babe, like, and Babe, Pig in the City. And it didn't, like, <laughs> didn't put a dent in the... Bacon industry. That's true. Yeah, they didn't care one way or another. And they're they're very yeah, to make another pulp fiction quote, they're very charming animals. I bet I bet a penguin would taste delicious and they're adorable. Yeah, probably. Probably. They're a bird, right? They've Yeah, they're a flightless bird. They're a flightless bird. They've got a lot of fat on them. Mm-hmm. And if that meat underneath tastes anything like a chicken, you get like a nice juicy fatty chicken. Might be great. Yeah. I always see like turkeys wandering around my neighborhood, uh, like in the middle of the summer. And I'm just, I drive by and I'm like, you son of a bitch. You're just lucky. It's not early November right now or else. Are you get turkeys yeah, in yeah, Sacramento? Yeah, be on the hot seat. Yeah. Surprisingly. That's crazy. All the okay. time. Okay. So, uh, let's finish this NFL stuff up because that seg- segment ran long. Um, let's do it. Let's start with what I think is kind of the actual biggest news just lingering around in the NFL, and that's uh, Aaron Donald and Khalil Mack. Neither one of them showing up for training camp. Neither one of them have a new deal. I think Aaron Donald will get a deal with uh, the Rams. I think the chances of Khalil Mack getting one are looking slimmer. Uh, What do you think? I think actually, I think it's the opposite. Like I expect Khalil Mack to get done soon, but here's the thing. Like the Rams just don't have money. Like I think they really, really want to pay Aaron Donald and they just spent too much money on guys like uh, Sue. And um, I don't know if uh, like Brandon Cook's, Cost them like a, a good chunk of change. Cooks and Gurley signed. Yeah, Gurley. Um, um, they're they're going to have to sign Goff eventually. Um, I think they don't have money until like a few years from now. And like, I don't think Aaron Donald wants to be paid like three or four years from now. Like, he probably just wants to get paid now. And I don't blame him because he's like a top three defensive player in the NFL. Right. And, and you're like, yeah, you sign all these guys, but you can't take care of the guy who's been here since St. Louis? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think – I don't – I don't think NFL money actually matters. I think if a team wants to find money, they find money to do it. So, uh, I think they would – I think they have it somewhere or they can make it happen. Uh, well, and what's I, stopping them, though, I in that know. case? I don't, I don't know, Will. I'm just saying shit right now. Uh, probably because they can't agree on what that number is. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like – I feel like he's more important to that team than Khalil Mack is to the Raiders. And I also feel like that John Gruden coming in, completely new coach with no loyalty and – I haven't heard any like trade rumors about Aaron Donald and there have been trade talks about Khalil Mack and it seems like the Raiders are opening to hearing some of those trade proposals. So that's why I feel like something might happen with Khalil Mack and him not being in Oakland. But again, this is all conjecture. Uh, and I kind of hope Khalil Mack gets out of <laughs> Oakland as a Broncos fan. I do too. Um, do you think anything would turn – the Raiders fans against John Gruden more than getting rid of Khalil Mack. Cause that's like the, the ultimate Josh McDaniels type of move. Right. Uh, I don't even think that would I turn him. I think Raiders fans love Gruden. Unconditionally. 
I don't know why <laughs> like he beat them in a Super Bowl. Like, yeah. why do you like? Why do you like this guy so much? It'd be like if like Dan Reeves ended up beating the Broncos that year when he was with the Falcons. With the Falcons, uh, and we just like all of a sudden like kept trying to get Dan Reeves back for like a decade. Which, which head coach do you think the Broncos have fucked over harder, Dan Reeves or Marty Schottenheimer? Oh, uh, I think Schottenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> we just yeah we. Yeah, we just like give Marty Schoenheimer a noogie every time they played uh, well, until like the last Chargers year. Like he beat up right. on us, but uh, he, in classic Schottenheimer fashion, was done before the playoffs even started, basically. Broncos, yeah, have not been. I mean, Dan Reeves, the three Super Bowl losses, uh, yeah. and then he gets to the Super Bowl and the Broncos beat him. Mm-hmm. Schottenheimer, the two losses in Cleveland. Uh, and then I know the Broncos screwed him over well, in Kansas City too. He Kansas beat them all City, the time. Right? Yeah, had a ton of great comebacks. The was it the playoff run? The Broncos playoff run to the Super Bowl was Schottenheimer the Chiefs coach then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah, the Broncos kept him from getting <laughs> uh to to the you know the big game several times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's like the one guy who's like the best coach that no one talks about right just because he never even made it to a super bowl marty he, ball that's yeah, all people like, say about him <laughs> yeah if you like look at his win percentage it's like right up there with some of the best he's like i'm sure he's i guarantee he's got a higher win percentage than like bill parcells but just oh. because bill parcells won a super bowl like yeah you know. we should look that up but we won't so yeah if you're listening do your own research yeah we should need an intern for this I think they should have invited him to be part of the Browns organization for this Hard Knocks. I'd, I'd like watch it. Hear, I'd like just to hear him. Just as like a consultant or some shit. Yeah. Every day he just like gives the same like there's a gleam man speech like that he did before the drive. Right. It's like no one knows what you're talking about, Marty. You're 85. Yeah, but we want in. we want to hear nonsense. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about yeah. Hard Knocks because it aired. Mm-hmm. It's big. People like it. Everybody else talked about it. Yeah. I thought it was good. Uh, what did uh, what'd you take away from that first episode, Will? Um, I mostly have been thinking about like, Hugh Jackson. And right. so, first of all, um, the thing that happened, like his, he lost his mother and he lost his brother in a two-week span. Yeah. Um, it's just like take a week off or like take a few days off at least. Like, he'll be fine. Todd Haley will coach the team for a couple days. It's just so weird to see him like – he has like a few offensive assistants in his office and he's like, yeah, well, I have an announcement. Um, so my brother died and then my mom died yesterday. So anyway, um, here's this inside zone yeah. that we've been working on. It's no, like, th- he was he, that meeting. He was like, my mom died this morning. Oh yeah. And they're like, all take, like, Oh take man. Take a day off work, man. It, it was like an example of like, grown men really out of touch with their feelings who don't know how to respond to each other in yeah. that moment. Like uh, the way those coaches responded was I thought kind of like weird. Uh, and I know Hugh Jackson, like at the time didn't want to make too big of a deal out of it. And then you're right. He just went right back into, we were looking at this game film. Uh, yeah. It's insane. Like and part of me respects like his focus and dedication to the team. Yeah. If it were any other team than the fucking Browns, you're coming off of a zero win season. There's no way you can get any worse. Uh, Totally fine. Just not be at work that day. Uh, Yeah. You got two head coaches on your staff already. Like, let them take over for a couple of days and you'll be okay. Yeah. And then later, uh, Jim or John Dorsey and some other guys came in and they, yeah. they hugged him and were a little more like, uh, mm-hmm. I think, showing some human emotion and that it's okay to be sad about your mom dying. And uh, he got a lot of love from his players when he mentioned it in the meeting. Yeah. Uh, Josh Gordon texted him. Right. So nice. it's, it's a crazy thing, I think, to witness like a guy – at a head coaching level having to deal with and how he deals with it. Yeah. And I think just shines a light on like how much pressure comes with that job. And especially Hugh Jackson, who's on the hottest of hot seats. Yeah. Ever imagined. And it's uh, you're right though. Like Todd Haley could have co- came in and coached the team, but I think we saw like, I don't think Hugh Jackson wants 
Todd Haley coaching that team at all. Like Jackson Agreed. made it pretty clear, like yeah. you're going to do things my fucking way. And I don't <laughs> really care what you guys say about players resting or not practicing right now. This is how it's going to be done. Uh, yeah, no, it was weird because like Jarvis Landry gave that whole speech about how guys like if like if their hamstring still like attached to their bone, like they should be out there practicing. And then Hugh Jackson's sitting in his meeting room with all of his coaches, and he's like, he's like, once you guys are in this chair, like meanwhile, like Greg Williams and Todd Haley have both been head coaches. It's like then you guys can make the rules, but here's like how I do it. Right. Like, after you've gone one and thirty-one in the last two years, like you might want to be a little more open to suggestions yeah that's my take yeah i think so because you know the injuries haven't been the browns problem the last two seasons so yeah, it's been a lot more than injuries <laughs> yeah i uh, hope is josh has josh gordon returned to practice do you know i don't think so i don't God. think so not yet and they I like it doesn't seem like that. so doesn't bad. seem like antonio callaway is gonna be sticking around for too long um, he was looking good, apparently. And they got rid of Corey Coleman, too. So they're right. suddenly kind of thin if Gordon doesn't come back soon. Yeah, Will wrote a good article uh, about the Browns getting just, as you put it, fleeced. Mm. And, yeah, and taken and to the woodshed. Their drafts, uh, their drafts have been horrible. Uh, they haven't mm. kept any of their high picks. I think Baker Mayfield will be different. I do, uh, too. And they're, the, Denzel Ward, right? There's a corner they yeah. took. I think both those guys are going to be good. I think they're on the right path. But you could have said that a lot of times about the Browns and been wrong. So we'll see what happens with them. Let's wrap up this podcast. uh, with uh, We were going to talk about male cheerleaders, but we won't. I already made a video about it. I think it's good they're letting them in the NFL. It's one of those things I don't think anybody was – clamoring for but yeah. i think if anybody wants to do it uh they should be able to and uh, i hope we see every team with at least one male cheerleader in the next two years are you just saying that because you're in the process of applying yes i have been working on it. my Respect strength it. my flexibility and my dance routines and if the Broncos won't let me into training camp, uh, they can't deny me being on the sidelines cheering for the team I love the most. Nope. <laughs> Sounds like a class action lawsuit waiting to happen. I love it. Um, yeah, so should we talk, we talk about uh, – I guess we got – We got everything. Give me the, uh, yeah. one of the players you're looking forward to watching uh, this season, not on the Broncos. Preseason. Uh, maybe two guys, but they've got the same name, so it counts as one. Josh Allen and Josh Rosen. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess those are really probably the most interesting quarterbacks to watch. Sam Darnold's going to get to play, but I, I think he has less question marks around him. Is Andrew Luck going to play in the preseason? Yeah, he's starting. Then that's the guy that I want to watch. I think tonight, yeah. I think he's going to be good. Yeah. That, uh, that is what I want to see. Okay. We are transitioning to the end of the podcast. Uh, If you made it this far, Mm -hmm. please let us know and um, tell us which team you would want to be a cheerleader for if you're a man. Yes. And remember to uh, do the Cortland Sutton tweet. Yes. And don't forget about the Cortland Sutton tweet. Saturday. Okay, Will Keys. He's on Twitter at Will Keys Six, just as it says on this screen. The entire episode. Make sure you share these things or download the pod, whatever you want to do. If you want. Thanks for listening. We love you. <laughs>